But here's what I would like to do. I want to sell a diagnostic because this is a repair call. All right? If it's a callback, I also want to sell a diagnostic. Because what's the difference between a repair call and a callback? Just been there. That's the only difference. Something's still not working. And we don't know whose fault it is, and we don't know what's wrong. All right? So in your evaluation, I don't care if it's an install call. Well, let me back up on that. Do you mind sitting here? You good? I'm good. Okay. What are the types of calls we run? Repair. Repair. Installation. Hey, I want repair calls. Install. Warranty. Callback warranty. And what's the other one we run? Power. Nope. Warranty. Safety inspection. Safety inspection. My goal is for you to sell a diagnostic or a form of a diagnostic on every one of those. So you get paid for your knowledge. One thing that's happened in the home service industry is we got down this road of giving customers all this information for $79. And it honestly has to stop. Okay? So I'm going to teach you how to do that. So. If I'm here for a repair call, an install call, a safety inspection, or a warranty, the next thing I'm going to do in my evaluation is pull out my circuit analyzer. How many people in this room have one of these? A lot? Okay. This is a huge value builder with your homeowner. Dude, I didn't have a, okay. I usually have an extension cord so I can hold it up while I plug it in. But, um, okay. So, does anybody have an extension cord close? Uh, they were on that table. That's all right. Yeah, if you want to find one, sure. So, when you turn it on, when you plug it in to an outlet, What's the first thing that comes up on this screen who has these? IDLM. What's that? It says IDLM. Yeah. <laughs> After that. Uh, voltage. Yeah, well, I think it's actually the voltage and the... Um, here, let me plug this in right here. Okay, so for those of you who have never seen, how many people have never used one of these? A few of you? Okay, all right. So the first thing that comes up is your polarity, just like your little cube testers. Now remember, we're not diagnosing things. This is for more for informational purposes for the homeowner. Okay, if we hit the down button once, it tells me what my incoming voltage to the house is. In this case, this is 122. It should be between 110 and 130, generally. Okay? If the, so the first outlet we plug this into should be the one closest to the service. That's the first outlet you should plug this into. And if this comes up to be extremely high or extremely low, more than likely we have a power company issue right away that we not, might not have ever known about. All right? All right, then we hit the down button again, and this is our voltage drop calculation. It defaults to 15 amps. So this is putting an actual 15 amp load on this circuit right now. And now our incoming voltage went from 122 down to 112. Because we have 7.7% voltage drop. If you hit it, the over button, it turns it to 20 amps. Now it puts a 20 amp load on it. If you hit it again, it's to 12 amp. But it defaults to 15, okay? I would only use this on 15 amp circuits. I wouldn't be using this on kitchen and bathroom circuits and newerish homes. 
Okay, so I would, I would be using this generally on an outlet closest to the panel, preferably a 15 amp circuit. All right? Now, what the National Electrical Code says, anything over 5% can cause glowing connections. There's actually a card that comes with the tester that actually cites the code that it says it on in here, about 5% voltage drop. It's written right in here. So when you get to a high C customer, there's a cheat sheet in here that talks about voltage drop. And it even says 5% and it lists that the NEC says it. So I would hang on to this little card that comes with the tester for your high C customers. They need third party verification. In fact, this is fourth party verification because the meter itself is a third party, right? So you'll plug this in if it, in the outlet closest to the panel. Then you'll plug it in at the outlet furthest from the panel. Generally, it's an upstairs bedroom or something like that. If at any time, if it's above 5%, we need to educate the homeowner on what that is. Okay? Now, I will tell you that very few houses you'll go in, it'll be below 5%. Very, very seldom. Um, the other thing you have to keep in mind is it depends on where the transformer is. The transformer might be three houses down. Well, look at the voltage drop we're losing when that transformer is three houses down. It's got to get to my panel and then from my panel all the way to whatever room I'm in, right? So that can matter too. You guys, this is just, this tool is just an indicator. It's not an end-all be-all. This is like going to the doctor and them taking your blood pressure. They might take your blood pressure, but they're not necessarily going to say you're going to have a heart attack tomorrow based off the blood pressure test, unless it's ridiculously high. It's just an indicator that we may have to look deeper into something. Okay? So don't get too hung up on the number or getting the number down or whatever. It's just an indicator. So. I'm going to check the voltage, the outlet closest to the panel, the outlet furthest to the panel. And I might take my glow tester and start checking some of the outlets around the area where the one is that's not working in this role play, because there's outlets not working. If this is an install call, maybe they want us to put in ceiling fans in three bedrooms. I would be taking my measurements on those rooms too. Because I want to sell a diagnostic or a version of a diagnostic on every call I can. Because I want to get paid for my time and I want to get paid for my knowledge. So, um, once I've figured this information out, I'm going to go grab my homeowner. And I'm going to explain what I found. Because this just helps pack more of a punch to the homeowner that a diagnostic is needed but I'm already planting the seed that this isn't an outlet problem. This could be a whole house problem. Because do I just want to change an outlet? Or do I want to do a whole, circ a whole house redevice? Which one do I want to do if the house needs it? Whole house redevice. But somehow, remember when he said, that's the outlet that's not working? I have to get him off the outlet and onto the circuit and off the circuit onto the whole house. That's my job as an electrician. I need him to understand this isn't, a circ this isn't an outlet problem. It's not a circuit problem. It's a whole house problem. So I'm going to plant the seed right away. And I would purposely, even though that outlet is probably not working anyway, purposely not use those outlets. I would use the one closest to the panel furthest from the panel. If one of those outlets is the closest or the furthest, I would take them to a different one. I want to start planting the seed that they got bigger problems in the house than just that outlet. Or potentially bigger problems. All right? So then I'll bring my customer, Damien, to my first outlet. This is the outlet, let's say, closest to the panel. Okay. I'll say, so uh, I just want to show you this meter really quick, Damien. So this meter here is what's called a circuit analyzer. 
And what it does, it sends a whole bunch of tests through your electrical wiring of your home, and it gives us a lot of great information. Yeah. Um, so the first thing it does is it tells us how much power is coming into the house. So you have 122 volts. And again, we want to take the, we want to take the techie names down as much as we can. He doesn't even know what volts is, and that's fine. So it's 122. Yes, that's okay. Good. Yeah, no, that is good. Okay. Yep, we want it to be between 110 and 130, and you're right in the middle, so That's you're looking great. good. That's great. So the next thing we do is what we, we actually put a load on it. So right now it's like I'm plugging a toaster into your circuit right now. That's what this is doing. Sure. And what it did once I put a load on it is it took it from 122 to 112. You said between 110 and 130 is good. Exactly, yep, that is good. Now there's a voltage drop, it's called. Anything above 5%, the National Fire Protection Agency, yeah, okay. <laughs> the National Fire Protection <laughs> Agency says there could be some hazards going on in your electrical system. So right now I'm going to say it's like 2% because we're by the panel. So you're at 2%, so you're good here. All right. So can I take you upstairs to another outlet? Sure. So I'll take them up there. We'll do the same thing. I'll show them. And here it's 7%. So we're above that 5%. So I'm not surprised you're having electrical failures in your home, like your outlet not working. We might have some bigger things going on here. So let's go back down and let me explain kind of what we do from here. Okay. All right? You're the boss. You're an electrician. Perfect. So now we come back to our table. And what's great is I made a home. We already sat here once. When I say let's go back to the table, we know exactly where we're going. There's no question in this. We never sell standing. We want to always sell sitting. But if you don't have a home, you can't sell sitting, right? So then I'll open up to my diagnostic page. Right here, does everybody have a di your diagnostic page? You should never sell a diagnostic without using this book. You just shouldn't, because they're not going to get all the information. All right, so uh, when we have electrical fail failures in your home, which is what you have going on here, there's really only three reasons why that happened. It could be a bad part, it could be a bad wire, or bad connections, or it possibly could be a combination of all three of those. So what the diagnostic includes is an unlimited time to find the problem. So I will figure out why that outlet's not working, and I'll figure out why your voltage on that meter is, the voltage drop is so high. I'm going to open up your electrical panel. I'm going to inspect each outlet and switch box on that circuit, and I'm going to run tests on the wiring. Uh, a level one or two minor repair is included. So if it is something simple, it'll be included in the price. But what it really does is it confirms that your system is safe and reliable. That is what you want, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Um, and then I can give you that one-year warranty, um, providing you follow all our, our recommendations that you're not going to have this problem with that circuit anymore. Okay. So um, you fall into a level three category, which is um, a single circuit containing multiple rooms. That's where we're at now. Um, that's full price or our club membership. Um, but again, remember, a level one or two minor repair is included with it. So you just find my knee, it's going to solve my problem? <clears throat> so I'm going to be able to run the diagnostic for that, yep. And a level one or two minor repair is included. However, don't forget the however part. However, if I find that you have more things going on with your home, like burnt wires in the wall or a whole bunch of bad connections, we could be getting into some higher categories, um, but until I do the diagnostic. I just don't know that right now. All right. So would you like to go ahead and do the diagnostic? I guess. All right, great. <laughs> and would you like to pay full price or would you like to become our club membership and save some money today? What's the club membership cost? Uh, so I can go through yeah. that. So now he gave me permission to sell a club membership. He asked, what's the club membership? Now I'll go into all the benefits and features of your club membership. All right. But I want him to ask. I don't want to start selling it without him asking. But notice what I did. I said, do you want to pay full price or do you want to play our club membership and save some money? Now I can sell the club membership. All right? Um, so he agrees to run the diagnostic. 
Do you think by using that meter he thinks he has bigger problems than just one more out there's one outlet not working? Yeah. It's way better than just not pulling that meter out before, which is the old way we used to do it, was just take a, a glow tester and you know, the beep, 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 we go in the other room, we took out the panel, we come back after three seconds or five seconds or ten seconds, sit back down. Yep, we're going to need to run a diagnostic, and you just start going through it. Like, we need to build more value, and that meter helps build more value, and it gets him off of the outlet and onto the whole house problem. Powerful stuff, right? Now... <laughs> I would literally do that same thing on an install call. It's being apparent to me that the, those of you who are in my last class, um, the QCA, which I know some of your companies are taking and running with it and some aren't, there's some confusion on how that works. It doesn't matter if we call it a diagnostic, a QCA, a home inspection, I don't care what you call it, we're literally doing a diagnostic is what it comes down to. So if this was an install call, like let's say they wanted three ceiling fans installed, I just proved to them with that meter there could be bigger problems in the house. So I would be proposing a diagnostic on an install call in this exact same situation. The worst thing they're going to say is no. And then I give them a price for the three ceiling fans, which I would have done anyway. But what if they say yes? What if I'm tapping off of existing circuits running to those ceiling fans and I got to arc fault protect all those circuits. And he says no. Because let me ask you, how does this work? I know you guys have probably been in this situation. You've done an install job. You, you wired whatever. You put in an arc fault breaker. And then two, three weeks, two, three months later, the breaker trips. What do you think the homeowner thinks at that point? You did something wrong. You're a crappy electrician, you're a crappy company. That's what they think. They don't understand how they work. They don't understand they're on existing wiring in the house. They didn't know. So, but if I prove to them with my meter that something bigger could be going on and they don't want to do it, I can say, okay, well, that's no problem. I'll still get you a price in your ceiling fans. I just want you to know that when we do your ceiling fan project, we will have to protect it with fire guard breakers and there's a chance that those breakers could find some of these problems and you might have some nuisance tripping and some things going on. Uh, I just want to let you know that before we move any further. Now I can wire my ceiling fans. If the breaker trips, I already proposed a diagnostic. I told them something could happen. And now hopefully they will remember that and be like, oh yeah, you... you you did tell me something more was going on. I'd be like, yeah, this is, this is why we do it, you know. It helps protect you from those types of things. Questions on that so far? So when you propose the diagnostic, then you would simply assume that you would go forth and turn that circuit off and pull everything off, check all the connections. I would do it that on that specific circuit, and then I would pull out a few other outlets and switches in each room so I can prove to them that it's not a circuit problem, it's a whole house problem. And then in my options, I will build in installing three ceiling fans, whole house redevice, installing three fans, two circuits restoration, installing three fans, one circuit restoration, and let them choose what they want to do. Sure. Um, so you fall into a level three category. Uh, this is full price or club membership price. Or, oh, would you like to pay full price or our club membership price and save a little money today? That's the club membership. Great question. Yeah. So this is that's that sheet I showed you right when I came here that you probably didn't look at. 
And then I'll go into my club membership. I was already page. mad at you because you were two hours late. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> No. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Don't build an option with diagnostic and three ceiling fans. Uh uh. We're selling a diagnostic. We're going to complete the diagnostic. And then we're going to write up options. And then during the diagnostic, we're going to do our safety inspection. We're going to find everything wrong with the house. Our top option might be $30,000 with, with ceiling fans. The next option might be $20,000 with ceiling fans. And the bottom option might be just installing ceiling fans and a one circuit restoration. Great question. Yes. That's a great question. Yep. So let's say, let's say they say, I don't want, I don't want to do the diagnostic. You could still offer a one circuit restoration with their ceiling fans and say, now this may protect you from any issues that I found earlier, but without doing the diagnostic, I don't know for sure. So your top option might be one circuit restoration just on the circuit you're tapping off of and three ceiling fans your next option might be just the three ceiling fans you know and then a bottom option or something you know what i mean okay. questions on that more questions on that restoration with a redevice. Like a device yeah you can call it a restoration or a whole house redevice it's a whole house restoration is really what a redevice is, yeah. yeah. So technically they are getting an artifact regardless because if they're getting the ceiling fans, they're getting a new breaker with the restoration. So yep. it's all, any and all devices on that circuit that are right. getting hit. Yep. So, um, so you can just sell, to make it easier and less complicated, Picture yourself selling a diagnostic on every one of these calls if the house needs it, at least proposing it. All they can say is no, and then you can give them the warranty disclaimer and still give them the price for the same stuff you were going to give them anyway. It's not going to hurt anything. So just a real quick thing on safety inspections. How many people are very, very good at selling stuff on safety inspections? You are? What do you think your closing rate is on safety inspections? Uh, pretty much every call I go to, um, one off once in a while. Now, I mean like you're going there for a safety inspection. It's not a service call. It's not a, you're just there for a safety inspection, like a club inspection. We don't have a club. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. No, it's usually the guys that have like involved in that. Okay. I'd say it's around 50%. 50%? That's pretty good. They, they had already gotten the thing they had wanted. Mm -hmm. They're, they're just there because of the added service and, of course, the big discount. Yep. Okay. The complimentary so if you're 50%, that's pretty dang good. Well, that's, that's just a total guess, but honestly, okay. I, maybe lower. Okay. Most electricians I know... Even the really good ones are more like 20 to 25 percent closing rate on safety inspections. Even I had a very hard time selling stuff on safety inspections, electrical safety inspections. However, we rolled out this meter and we rolled out a form of the diagnostic and I have I took an electrical apprentice with very good communication skills. He's selling 60% of our club inspections. He's selling diagnostics because of that meter. 
and then our senior technicians going out behind him after they buy a diagnostic and he runs the diagnostic. We did $100,000 in revenue in January just off those. It just turned our club inspections into a profit center. And now we're going to start advertising and valve pack and all kinds of stuff about safety inspections all year long, where before we hated running those. We just did it to fill the schedule, dang near. So after it works. circuit refresh, did you then take that meter back and, and check to make sure that the voltage drop the power was taken care of, or did the customer ask for that? Good question. Okay, so in our electrician technician's mind, we get fixated on this number. Remember what I said earlier, this is an indicator. The voltage drop may not go down. It might not. So we have to give the homeowner that disclaimer. After they buy it, literally after they buy it and give you half down or secured financing, you tell them. Now, Mr. Jones, the number may not go down on the meter. I'm not worried you have high voltage drop if all your connections are good in the home. I'm worried you have high voltage drop if you have bad connections in the home. I'm saying that for you in the room and for our homeowners. Because think about it. We're not doing a diagnostic to get the number down. We're, getting, we're doing a diagnostic to see how bad their connections are, which is generally backstab connections. But it may not be the connections. The problem could be on the mast. It could be in the meter. It could be in the panel. Or it could be in the circuits. So don't automatically think you're selling a redevice with a diagnostic on voltage drop. This is just an indicator. It's just like the doctor taking your blood pressure. He's just trying to think, do I need to do a, what is it called, EKG or something like that? With your heart, I don't know what they're called, but right? It just is an indicator that we might need to dive into something further. So you can go around and double check if you like with your meter. And if it, got, if it went down, absolutely, prove it to the customer, show them. That's great. That just builds more value. But we got to give the disclaimer, it may not go down. And it's okay if it doesn't, because we know the connections are good in the home. There are some homes, you'll never get it down to 5%. You could run number 10 to every room, and you still probably won't get it down past 5% if they're really long runs, and the transformer's three blocks down the road, you know? But the connections, the NEC says anything over 5% can cause glowing connections. They're even saying it's the connections, not the number. Okay? So... We're concerned about the connections, not the number. You need to know that as electricians, and the homeowner needs to understand that same concept. But I'll be very surprised if it doesn't go down. Very surprised. At least a little. It may not get below 5%, but it should go down. Questions on that? But you'll run the diagnostic if you pull every, if you, if they pay you to do the diagnostic and everything's secure and everything's wired properly and the panel's in good shape and all the connections are tight and the, the meter's tight and everything's good, you don't need to give them an option to redevice the whole house. But you, you got paid, now you got paid to check it out. The homeowner has peace of mind and you got paid to write up your options for the ceiling fan. even if they don't buy the ceiling fans. Are we getting close to a break? Yeah. yeah. Last question back there. I was going to say, some customers just can't satisfy. I just ran into that situation. And uh, this guy was a TV here, construction engineer with some big company. And uh, his highest voltage drop was like 14. Oh. Top floor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, probably not. That's probably just better to walk away on those. <laughs> yeah. But 
that problem will come up once every five years, that type of job. You know what I mean? Like, it's just not the normal. All right, uh, let's take a break. If you got more questions about this, bring them, bring them back for the group because this is a holdup for a lot of people, I think.